It's Alexi, and in this video we are taking a look at the arpeggiator in the Oxy-1 Mark II. I have a few different types of arpeggiators here. We have the keyboard arpeggiator, which is available in all modes, and it uses uh, notes from this performance keyboard here. And then we have uh, poly and chord arpeggiators, which use um, notes from the grid. Okay, now we'll start with the keyboard arpeggiator. I will go into the keyboard by pressing the keyboard button here, and then we'll press the arpeggiator button to get to the arpeggiator menu here. Now turn the arpeggiator on, you will uh, rotate the first encoder, and it will turn on, and you can see your arpeggiator type on the top of the screen here. Now, if I play here, you will notice that the screen says press play for ARP or roll. So we'll press play and then play a chord here. And we get an arpe arpeggiated pattern. Now, we'll go through the settings here. And for this, I will uh, engage hold here and play a chord. So now we have a held chord here, which is arpeggiated. So the first thing order, as I said, will scroll through the different arpeggiator types. You have many of these uh, common patterns here. as well as some more complex patterns. A random will constantly randomize the pattern. Random once will randomize the pattern once and then keep playing the same pattern. And order will play them in the order you played them in. Now, to quickly turn off the arpeggiator, you can hold shift and click the first encoder. And if you shift and click again, it will go back to the same settings you had before. I will go through the rest of the uh, menu settings here. So we'll turn on the arpeggiator, set it to up, and try the octave setting. Now, this is an octave variation setting, which is different from the traditional arpeggiator octave setting in that it, this doesn't simply uh, repeat the arpeggiator pattern in a higher or lower octave. This will add higher or lower notes in a less predictable pattern here. seven or you can go lower a gate will simply affect your gate length of your arpeggiated notes you can go shorter or lower Division will change the division of your arpeggiator pattern. In the chord and poly modes, this is independent from the grid. And you can go quite slow here. Go back to 16 notes. I will skip to page 2 for the next settings here. We'll look at reset first. So this will basically uh, 
set to whether the arpeggiator will reset the pattern when you give it new notes. So if we set it to on, we should be getting a, a predictable pattern that will always start from the lowest note here. Let me set it to off. It will simply keep the pattern going and it won't reset when you change your notes. So it makes for a, a more interesting pattern. Now latch will allow, allow me to add notes to the keyboard here. When I have hold engaged and I can turn or remove notes here and add different ones, ones here. And when you add enough notes, you reach the maximum, it will steal from the, I believe it will steal from the, uh, the first note you've added. Okay, now I'm going on to the next settings here. So we have grooves. So the arpeggiator has the same groove settings that you have in the um, groove under the groove button here. So you can apply grooves to the arpeggiator pattern. So we have groove one selected and we can add time variation. And you can scale the amount of variation here and go negative. little bit of time variation here and then pressing page we get to the first page here and you have accent now this is velocity accent and this is based on the groove as well so this is why I didn't show it before this will add velocity variation based on your selected groove We can change the groove here. So I can add a lot of variation to your pattern here. Let's move on to the uh, poly arpeggiator. So for this one, I will set the scale to, let's say minor, and we'll set some notes on the grid here. So this is what is feeding the arpeggiator. We'll add something here, and I'll make the pattern end here, and we'll make the track division one bar, so it will keep, keep the same for a while. Now, in the grid view, we'll simply press um, the R button and we get to the arpeggiator menu. Now, to turn it on, it's the same process here, and press play, and we get an arpeggiator pattern. Now you'll notice the menu looks a little bit different. We have most of the same settings here. We have the types and octave variation, the accent which is based on the groove, and on the other page we have the groove time again, and reset. I'll just 
keep this pattern going. And I will demonstrate the Euclidean gener generator here because we have more settings. We have one more setting for the Euclidean generator than we have in the keyboard bar. So the Euclidean generator uh, it's pretty basic. We have our length. So you can add length to the arpeggiator pattern. We can change the amount of pulses, which will be spread evenly across the length of the pattern, or as evenly as possible. Then we have rotate. And this will simply uh, shift the pattern over by as many steps as you set here. And then we have repetition, which will add repetitions to each pulse. So you can hear now it's repeating twice for each pulse. This will make for some very rhythmically interesting patterns here by using combination of the um, grooves and the Euclidean generator as well as the octave variation. So not just your basic straight arpeggiator patterns. Okay, next we'll take a look at the chord arpeggiator. So we'll set our um, Sequencer type to chord, set our scale to uh, Phrygian, and we'll set some chords on the grid here and change the settings, spread them out, make them seventh chords. We'll set our end point here and our track division to one bar. And we'll turn our, our chord arpeggiator and press play. So now it's using the chords we have on the grid as the source for the arpeggiator. And you get the same settings as for the poly arpeggiator here. Now we'll look at the, the modulation options in the arpeggiator. Basically, you can use the LFO or the modulation lane or external modulation to modulate almost any parameter in the no, arpeggiators. So we'll go into our LFO and we'll set our internal destination here to chord, chord arp <coughs> and octave. So octave variation, I set the rate to let's say three bars and amount to seven. So you'll notice we're getting some octave variation here. to chord arpeggiator um, division and rate to three bars and amount. Now the manual has the optimal ranges for these parameters listed. 
So you can refer to the manual or the optimal settings for um, each uh, modulation destination. But you can get quite a lot of variation by modulating the uh, arpeggiator. Again, we can add accent, some groove time here, change the groove. our Euclidean settings again. Make for some constantly evolving patterns. Okay, now that's it for the uh, arpeggiators in the Oxy-1 Mark II. Now there's a lot of depth here, especially when you modulate uh, some of the parameters, so you get some uh, evolving patterns going. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you like and subscribe, and I will see you again soon.